We're going to make sprite wobble thing. Now you want to add sprite. I will call it player display and I will save this as a branch. Let's open this scene here. Add a script. I'll call it player display gd. Gonna put the sprite here. We have a little sprite. So, so that's nice. Now we want to wobble. I'm going to say process. This process function different from physics process. It only executes every single frame. So this is gonna be better for the visual stuff. So I want to modify the rotation. For example, I'll say rotation is one. You know that's on the right side, and I can say rotation is negative one. That goes on the left side. So. We want to make this number go positive, negative, positive, negative. This sort of periodic motion is best with the trigonometry functions, the sine function. We will make a variable called t for time. And we're going to increment it by delta every single frame. And feed that into t. That looks like this. it's a little slow so we are going to time this value by something now you see it tips left and right faster so we will call this thing frequency i'm just gonna call it freq that's easier to type and usually not confused with anything else i'm going to export it i'm going to put 18 on it which looks about right to me you will see that the character looks more like it's dangling it's hanging it's not really you know it's not really wiggling on the foot and the easiest way i have found is by adding a children sprite and then instead of putting the texture on the parent sprite we put that on the child you can offset this and Maybe for you is any other case, and maybe for you, you don't even ever need to do this. The rotation center looks like it's on his foot, but uh, he's kind of levitating. Uh, I want to move the collision shape up a bit. So that looks slightly better. You'll see that it's wobbling a little too much. This is because sine outputs from 1 to negative 1, which in terms of of angle is about like a sixth of a circle. A smaller wobbling angle like this. So of course you can also use larger number and it's gonna wobble more. We're gonna give it a variable called amp. Currently it's at zero, it's not moving at all. If I change this value, you see that it starts wobbling. In programming, we usually like to normalize values, which is to say to bound a value between 0 and 1. So what I'm going to do is time this by pi. So when I do that, 1 is exactly half a circle and that lets us be more precise about how much it wobbles and give it a nice little wobble. Maybe that, that looks pretty nice to me. Usually you also see the sprite tipping right when the character is going right, tipping left when the character is moving left. So we want to do that number. So if I use one, it tips to the right. If I give it negative values, it tips to the left. We want to make this dependent on your velocity x or any other value but i'm going to say velocity x here i'm going to give it a variable val and i'm going to make a function set val from other places i can decide that velocity because as the player display module i don't know the velocity but what does know is the player again we use process these math things is just me adjusting velocity to zero to one. So once I got that, 
You can see that your player character will tip left and right, moving left, moving right. So you might be thinking that it tips a little too much or maybe too little. So what you can do is giving it a tilt variable and I'm going to export it. So I'm going to adjust the tilt value and now your player character will tilt accordingly. And again, normalization. Okay, so that looks like a good amount of wobble to me. You notice that when we are standing and not doing anything, we are still wobbling. And that's not actually what, well, oh, maybe you do want that, but not what I want. So, so as you can see, when we're not moving, we don't wobble. When we're moving, we do the wobble. Uh, it's looking nice to me. So that's all you need to know for the player wobble. The next part is going to be about squishing the character. So you might not need to watch the next bit. Normally the scale is at one. When I make it two, it, the sprite is going to be fat. When I make it 0.5, the sprite is going to be thinner. When we have high velocity, it's gonna be small number. And when we are not moving, when vel y is at zero, it's gonna be at one. I'm gonna make one minus that. So you see that we give it a nice little wobble. Uh, you do want to notice that uh, velocity of y is not always at positive values. Maybe sometimes it's jumping, sometimes it's falling. This may be good enough for you and you can stop here and just experiment yourself but i want to make it look even bouncier and i can use tween to do that so if you want to follow add a tween then we're gonna get the tween add a variable bounce we're gonna set scale x to bounce tween and interpolate how much we bounce this is the line that i just showed you instead of directly putting it in there uh, we use interpolation so we can make it even bouncier this pretty much looks exactly the same as before the reason is because your duration is delta so the tween has already finished before the frame ends so we're gonna time this by a bigger number for example like seven you'll see that we get the sort of jelly jiggly effect. I'm going to give it a variable loop because uh, it's obviously it's gonna be called bloop. Very descriptive. And you can see that our character bloops. And this is about all you need to know. Thanks for watching. I will be posting more Godot content.